Hello everyone and welcome to the Lathrom channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews, and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody, Matt from Lathrom here. Today we're going to be going over some more information for you animators out there on the block and uh, well we're going to be showcasing Substance Painter. Uh, if you recall, it's if you have no clue what it is, it's basically somewhat similar to other programs out there like Mari uh, from the Foundry. Um, basically, it makes things a little bit easier on the you know the painting and the texturing side of things. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it is the end all be all excuse to avoid UV wrapping or unwrapping I should say unfortunately you know depending on how you look at things you can't exactly avoid uh, you know the UV work on the modeling end I know it is always a pain in the butt it is always time consuming you know especially when you unwrap the UVs and then you have to sit there and stitch you know align them and stitch them and all that other good stuff I know it is a pain I know it's time consuming as hell but, I mean, technically you could use this as, I guess, a, a quick way of throwing something together to kind of get your point across. But I wouldn't completely, you know, get rid of the whole UV unwrap. It, you know, it, it's got its place. But as you can see by the layout here, we have our, you know, our actual 3D model over here, which I'm using an iBot from Fallout 4. In the center we have our UV that's been unwrapped. We also have layers, somewhat very similar to Photoshop. You also have your texture set list, your actual paint properties. Uh, you have a lot of information that you can cover. You also have your texture set settings. You have down here at the, towards the bottom you have a shelf with your alphas, procedurals, generators, textures, filters, brushes, particles, tools, materials and smart materials I know that's a lot of things oh you also have your post effects and your viewer settings now I'm gonna try and go over this not not so much quickly this isn't a tutorial this is basically a showcase to show you what you can do with it so this kind of gives you an idea here we'll go ahead and turn all this stuff off and this is exactly what I basically brought into Substance Painter straight out of 3ds Max As you can tell it's plain Jane It's basically got no material on it whatsoever. It's got a little bit of uh, Information as far as your normal map. It's also got uh, your ambient occlusion curvature and position There are different ways you can get this you don't necessarily need all this information straight out of your 3D program. Uh, you can actually populate this information inside Substance Painter. But, like I said, this isn't you know a tutorial. This is just an overview. So, as you can see, I have different layers. And each one has a little something-something to it. Now, my overall base, which is what I started out with, is nothing more than an aluminum material that's been painted onto this eyeball. Nothing more, nothing less. Looks generic? Well, that's because it is. Then we started going out from there. Started with a steel base. And then from that steel base, I also put a little bit of dirt on it. Which, I don't know how much you could tell through YouTube that that's changing. But, I threw some dirt on there. I also uh, did a little bit of sharpening. Had some steel scratches involved here. Then there was an overlay co uh, color. Again, I'm just basically putting these on in layers to try and get a little bit more depth out of it. On top of that, you also have a dirt, which is nothing more than like a kind of an extra grime layer. And I still got to get used to this inverted uh, scroll wheel. But then you have mud on top of that. And as you can tell, I mean, there's literally mud. And it has a little bit of information as far as well let's see let's drop this down here 
we have different things and it's if you've sat down with photoshop and you've had to do this the you know the long and hard way so to say you will have no issues whatsoever walking around you know in this environment all in all there are a few things that i want to say about substance painter first and foremost it is a little bit more user friendly than something like mari not you know that I'm not i'm not knocking on mari i'm not talking down on it or anything like that it's just that substance painter is a little bit more user friendly it's a little bit easier to pick up from scratch if you've never played with anything like this and you know maybe your i guess main principle of experience is photoshop that's fine the other thing is price with mari for a you know a commercial license you're looking at over two thousand dollars including tax if you are in a location that charges tax and that is just for a node lock you know license okay it is what it is still i think it's kind of steep but you're looking at i think it's 20 2032 uh, $2, for substance painter pro it's about 590 dollars now the other flip side of that is you know with mari if you're a student you can get it for as you know as low as 149 dollars i believe it is but it rules out the indie field whereas substance painter doesn't really have a student license but it has an indie license for 150 dollars or 149 dollars rather i don't believe that i've seen anywhere on the foundry's website where they really have it broken down for indie you know creators i could be very well wrong if i am by all means let me know in the comment box but from a standpoint of an independent you know creator i know very well i don't have you know two thousand dollars burning in my back pocket to shoot for mari I'd rather go with something that's least expensive, uh, less expensive, like Substance Painter, where it's only $150 for an indie license. I could go ahead and utilize that, and I don't have to worry about getting nicked, providing, I, well, for using an indie license. <sighs> Let me take a step back. I don't have to worry about getting nicked for using an education license with something commercial because we all know that is not a good thing to try and do you're not allowed it's in the EU e -U -L -A. now with the you know the indie license for substance painter well then as long as you're making under a hundred thousand dollars per year in revenue you can go ahead and use that indie license to your desire but that's all I really have in lieu of substance painter I'll have the links in the description below so you can check it out, you know, peruse through it. I believe they also have a little trial uh, for you to basically play around with, see if it's something that you like. And if it is, hey, maybe uh, you might look at it in the indie field in the near future. I don't know. I'm only guessing. But that's about all I have for right now with this video. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. As always, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, I will see you later.